always love to go behind the scenes. At Canada Post, Don's taking us there. Yeah, and it's awesome here. It is just a massive facility here. We're brand new uh, Canada Post processing plant. Good morning, Doug. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. It's always nice when we get behind the scenes look. How big is this actual facility? Uh, the facility itself is uh, around 700,000 square feet. Uh, and it just opened. It just opened. We just opened in February of this year. So, so you're breaking it in. Breaking it breaking in, Breaking yes. time for the Christmas season. How exactly. many employees do you have working here? Uh, in total, there's about 1,500 employees that uh, work in the, the processing plant as well as our administrative office that supports the rest of the operations in the BC area. Let's talk about the order of things. What are we seeing right now? What you're seeing right now is uh, what we call our scan tunnel. Uh, so what the scan tunnel does is each of the small packages that come through have a barcode on it. So what the scan tunnel is doing is it's searching for the barcode. So the scan tunnel is actually a six-sided reader. So it can read all six sides of the package coming through. It would search for the barcode and the barcode would contain the mailing information on it so that the sorter will know where that package is going to go so it knows where to sort it to. And of course they have to go basically single through so any that kind of go off end up going back through the sorting. What are we seeing right now? Right now what you're seeing is uh, we have a, a double layered sorter so each item on the cross belt sorter once it gets to the proper bin for where it needs to get sorted to will get discharged into that bin that, that you'll see the, the gray bins that we sort into. Excellent. Now we noticed that a few packages they, they kind of end up off the conveyor belt. What happens with those packages? Those packages uh, during the breaks our uh, technical services department will go in and, and clean up all the uh, packages that happen to fall on the ground. So and nothing get them back gets in. missed. Nothing gets nothing missed. Gets missed no. And then finally we're seeing some pretty big containers over here. Those are uh, our air containers. So we have uh, we have uh, two primary air modes of transportation that we sort product into these air cans and then these air cans will be taken uh, to ramp side and get loaded onto aircraft and the aircraft will fly across the country to to make sure all of our air packages are um, gone to their destination in time. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the bit of a tour, Jody. We've got lots more coming up from Richmond throughout the morning, including your final deadline date if you want to get those packages received in time for Christmas. We're here right now in the new Canada Post uh, processing plant. Good morning again, Doug. Good morning. Um, what are we seeing here right now? What you're seeing here right now is what we call our automated singulator, which basically puts all of our packages in a single file before it goes through the scan tunnels. So anything that's made its way to this conveyor as we can see even things are falling off it's because there's been multiple that went through right that's correct if it's not in a perfect single file then it'll kick it off and it'll recirculate back into the hopper what are we seeing here uh, this is our uh, main shipping sorter so it's a, our multi-purpose sorter which not only sorts all of our parcels but also transports and sorts all of our containers our traditional mail to other work centers Excellent. Thank you very much. It's so interesting here. And you know, a lot of people probably have placed their orders on the shopping channel or various sites like that. Um, no question, uh, Ron, we like our e-commerce. We like shopping online. Absolutely. This is going to be a very, very busy time of year for us. Um, we're expecting about 800,000 parcels per day for the Christmas season. And last year, we actually had 10 days over a million parcels per day. Our high was 1.25 million. That was December 16th last year. And uh, in Vancouver, we like it. We're actually number one as far as uh, online shopping. That's right. Our our e-commerce e uh, customers have told us they expected growth between 20 and 30 percent. This year in Vancouver alone, we're at 39 percent. Victoria, 35 percent. Overall, our parcel business is up 29 percent in British Columbia. We're number one in the country. And we like our fashion. We like our appliances. We like it all, Michelle. Um, again, uh, we're going to talk about some of those deadlines for your package, shipping your packages uh, coming up in the next segment. Yeah, and you know, um, it's, a, it's a great facility. It's a brand new facility. And they even get into the holiday spirit with the Canada Post truck with all the, the Christmas lights on it. You guys are really getting into the spirit here. Yeah, it's all about Christmas, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. You know, and in this, you know, day and age of email and everyone's typing everything, there's nothing like a handwritten letter. And I think Santa probably likes getting those oh, too. Oh, Santa and Mrs. Claus loves reading those special handwritten letters from all the children. It's amazing that children still love to write to Santa. And you actually do have emails that go out, but it's the handwritten ones that the numbers are, are huge. Emails are very, very small volume, yes. How many do you, uh, letters do you actually send out? We have about 1.3 million uh, letters are delivered from Santa and the North Pole to all the children who write to him. And that's internationally, locally how many? Locally about 200,000 here in the Vancouver area, of course. And you must see some beautiful letters. You've got some examples well, of some of the great uh, ones that the kids I know are going to be excited that Santa's going to see. It is very see. exciting because the children... <laughs> I mean, they're so creative uh, in what they ask Santa or the, the design of their letters to uh, Santa. Whoops, oh, sorry. Oh. 
that's going to make it to Back Santa. Don't worry. Mail. That's making it to Santa. We, that we should point out the production uh, facility actually closes down between 8 and 10 in the event any letters get dropped. That's right, exactly. <laughs> so let's show people at home and what else we have here. another creative. Some children try to bribe Santa by uh, sending him candies. Yep. And uh, some have, have very creative uh, coloring mm -hmm. and printing. Oh, let's show this one here that we got, the one and with the little googly eyes. And this one is very, very creative. <laughs> so a lot of children make a big effort to write to Santa. It's so exciting getting those letters. And important to note, the deadline for the Santa letters is? December the 21st. December the 21st. If you want to make sure Santa gets that letter in time, once again, Jody, we are going to retrieve that very important letter. <laughs> to Santa because we don't want any oh, kids to miss those. Yeah. Don't worry, Santa will no, get those No problem letters. at all. It's no way. <laughs> all of those letters will magically make it to Santa. No problem. Okay. And Greg, we've got some great options um, from Canada Post, including, first off, something very personalized. Yeah, we got picture postage. It's a, it's a very unique product. It's very, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. You can get a stamp made. So if you go to CanadaPost.ca, you can go online, send a picture in. Uh, it can be a picture of your mom, your dad. I actually did one for my mom a couple oh, years ago. Oh, nice. And it's an actual stamp that you can use to mail their letters around the country. Perfect. Now, you've also got some, well, almost like art gallery quality uh, items as well. Yeah, so part of our, our stamp program in 2014 is featuring the NHL original six teams. We've got uh, uh, very spring prints of defensemen, some really good stocking stuffer. Some great um, NHL items as well. Yeah, a lot of uh, really cool stocking stuffer ideas. Uh, one, of the, one of the really neat items is this little collector pack. It's uh, $15, features our souvenir sheets for each of the original six teams. For those that collect coins. And 1 in 50 has a signed, um, is signed by one of the uh, defensemen we're featuring. Very nice. We've also got some coins, of course, from the Canadian Mint. And, of course, you can't go wrong with gift cards. All these items are available at the Georgia Street uh, Canada Post, correct? That's correct? Yeah. All our post offices carry this, but our best selection is downtown at our main office on Georgia. Excellent. For those details, of course, you can continue to check Canada Post. Don't forget your Santa letters. Get those out, Jody. We've got lots more, including details with the Canada um, Border Services Agency coming up just before 9 o'clock. We've got one of the stars from Border Security, Tanya. You appear on that show. That's correct. Is it pretty awesome? Is it pretty fun? It's been awesome. It's been <laughs> extremely educational. It's been a fabulous learning experience, both for me and for the travelers, I think. Well, you know, and that's what we're hoping to do is provide a bit of education this morning for people that are sending international parcels. But first off, what exactly is your role here with Canada Post? Well, as Border Service officers, our, our job is our keep position is to keep Canada safe. So we do that by intercepting parcels that are um, controlled or regulated and by facilitating the entry of the ones that aren't. Okay. So when it comes to actually sending parcels, um, the deadlines, of course, are approaching and the times can vary based on, I guess, how properly people have their parcels prepared. Exactly. So you have an example of a perfectly prepared parcel. <laughs> Tell us about what people should be doing. So what we're looking for in order to get your parcel from point A to point B in the shortest amount of time is a, a very completely and accurately filled out customs declaration form with the contents labeled, again, accurately, um, value included, uh, a complete address here, whoever you're sending it to, that's legible. and. Um, for your best interest as well, package it properly so that it's uh, sturdy and it survives alive. What are the biggest mistakes you see people make? Again, we see people sending, they, they procrastinate, they expect their parcel to get there in a short amount of time and due to the volumes right now at Christmas, it's going to take a little longer. And uh, without your completely filled out and accurately described contents on your custom declaration form, it's going to be scrutinized more thoroughly. But the contents themselves, of course, there are very strict rules about what you can actually send. Absolutely. So what kinds of things should we be wary of sending? Wary? Well, there's lots of things that should be wary of sending. You have to obviously do a little homework in advance and know what the regulations are when you're sending things across the, an food? international can we bring? Can we send food? Some cookies? food you can, some yeah? you can. Okay. I mean, fruitcakes, yes. Uh, chickens, no. <laughs> so, Or they're subject to further inspection. You know? Well, for all those details, you can, of course, check out the website. Um, making it easy for us, making it safe. Thanks so much to Canada Post for having us here at their brand new plant. Um, see you guys tomorrow. Take care, Joe.